Hi everybody, happy Earth Day. We decided to uh, sit outside today being that it's Earth Day, so welcome. It's uh, a little chilly here today. It was 80 yesterday in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and this morning it was 38 degrees, so sweater weather today. Um, if you're just joining us, be sure to like, share, and tag a friend. We're going to do a drawing at the end of the reading to give away some books. A little windy. So uh, just like, uh, share, and tag a friend. And then uh, once you do that, that's going to get your name in the drawing. So pretty exciting. Um, just to give a little backstory of Shel Silverstein, I think I uh, developed a, a childhood crush on him in 1982 when I took a journalism class in high school with Ann Ricketts, my all-time favorite teacher. And uh, Shel Silverstein was someone I was assigned to as a report, so to do a report. So I started doing my research on him. What I found him was really quite fascinating, just his accomplishments. He is an American writer, a poet, cartoonist. He's done tons of music, music that I'm sure you're familiar with. If you're not familiar with Shell or his background, he wrote uh, Johnny Cash's A Boy Named Sue. He wrote Dr. Hook's The Cover of the Rolling Stones. Uh, he has won two Grammys uh, and then was nominated for Golden Globe and the Academy Award. Did not win, but was nominated, so it's pretty great. He's also was a playwright, and he had over a hundred one-act plays and uh, was best friends with David Mamet, who is a huge Broadway writer and uh, producer. So he was very diversified, and I always just found that fascinating that he had so many different lives in music and art and uh, playwrights and movies and uh, was just incredibly diversified. Uh, passed away, I think, in 1999 in Key West, Florida. And what I found really fascinating is that uh, I think in... I think in like 2017, the house that he lived in uh, was destroyed by a big, big tree, which I thought that was a little ironic being that The Giving Tree was his um, most successful book. Anyway, we're going to read two of his books today. Um, here's my whole collection, but we're going to read The Giving Tree and A Giraffe and a Half. So uh, Kimberly in class, hello, welcome, thank you for joining and so um, I think we'll start with Giraffe and a Half because this one's just kind of light and lyrical and fun. And Susie, thanks for joining. So if you guys have a favorite Shel Silverstein book, uh, let us know because uh, maybe we'll do some more readings with that later down the road. The other thing that I had purchased in uh, the early 2000s when my kids were in their early years and young, young teens was uh, Shel Silverstein had a... Um, um, a CD and it was the best of Shel Silverstein and it's where he does readings and then like Johnny Cash does a boy named Sue on it but it is one of the funniest CDs and it's basically readings and um, songs but very very funny your kids will love it my kids love the CD we wore it out and had to buy several copies over the years but I couldn't find my copy today but it's also on Amazon Music and um, I think an MP3 file you can download it. But Jennifer, my, Idaho, hello, hello. Is that what's the name? That what was that name? George Ann. George Ann. Thanks for joining. What a cute name. So I'll go ahead and get uh, started reading this. I just got this copy and it's in color, so I thought that was interesting because most of his books, only The Giving Tree is the one that's printed in color, actually, and the rest are all in black and white. But I found this one with a color cover, so I had to swipe it. Um, so we'll start with that, and it is A Giraffe and a Half by Shel Silverstein. So, if you had a giraffe, and he stretched another half, you would have a giraffe and a half. If he put on a hat and lived inside, and inside lived a rat, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat. If you dressed him in a suit and he looked very cute, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit. If you glued up a rose to the tip of his nose, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose. If a bumbly old bee stung him right on the knee, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee. If he put on a shoe and then stepped in some glue, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee, 
and some glue on his shoe. If you have, if you gave him a flute and he played tooty toot, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe, playing toot on a flute. If he used a chair to comb his hair, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe, playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair. If he tripped on a snake who was eating some cake, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe, playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake. If he found an old trunk and inside was a skunk, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe, playing a toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk. If he met a fat dragon who sat in a wagon, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe, playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and eating and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon. If he jumped on a bike and he rode over a spike, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe, playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon and a spike in his bike. If a blueberry whale got a hold of his tail, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe with playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon and a spike in his bike and a whale on his tail. If he fell in a hole that was dug by a mole, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe, playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snack, a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon and a spike in his bike and a whale in his tail and a hole with a mole. But if you brought him a pole to climb out of the hole and the whale left his tail and went off for the mail and he gave the spiked bike to a scout on a hike and he left the fat dragon cause his wagon was sagging and gave his chair to a tired old bear and he traded the flute to a bird for some fruit and told the old snake to go jump in a lake. And a man bought junk, bought the trunk with the skunk. And he gave the rose to a girl he chose, while the bee on his knee flew away with a flea. And he put the shoe with the glue on you, and that silly old rat ran away with his hat. And he put his suit in the laundry chute, and he shrank another half. You would have a giraffe. So, a little poem there, but extended into a story. A shout out to Buzz Media, who does all my viral media and uh, websites. If you guys are looking for somebody, Logan Creech with Buzz Media. Fantastic. If I could do a whole podcast on her greatness. And then, so, oh, we've got lots of people joining. So Tracy and Elijah, Brenda, Jonathan and Ava, Claudia, Caroline, Tina, and Adam. Oh, my son Adam is even watching. How, how exciting is this? Well, I, maybe I should do a dedication to Adam as I read this. Oh, uh, a like and tag and make, be sure to share, guys. So that's what gets you in the drawing for the free books. So, and also, 
Today is my niece's birthday, Jessica Orlowski, who lives in New Orleans. So happy birthday, Jessica. And winner number one, Kimberly and Jeremy. Yes? That's her full name. Kimberly and Jeremy. How's that a cute name? All these cute names. All right, so Kimberly, a happy winner. So you get the first set of books. Yay. I had to scramble for this today because I've had so many copies over the year and I couldn't find a copy of this this morning. So I went through the like the kind of a kitty um, library in the house and found it. And this is the actual book that I gave to my eldest daughter who is now almost 33 years old. And this was given to her when she was three months old, her first Christmas. And it, and I opened it up today and then the inscription of, uh, of where I wrote to her was there and that made me a little teary, but that's okay. Um, anyway, her artwork in there. It's all covered in just, I mean, this book has been worn and loved. So we're going to do the giving tree now. And it's about just a love story, basically, between a parent and a son. So I'm glad my son's on the call. So, but I think he gets it. So we'll start with that. Oh, Doug and Kenny, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. And then uh, here we go. The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. So once there was a tree... And she loved a little boy. And every day the boy would come. And he would gather her leaves. And make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk. And swing from her branches. And eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. Got it sticky there. And the boy loved the tree very much. And the tree was happy. But time went by and the boy grew older. And the tree was often alone. Then one day the boy came to the tree and the tree said, come boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want to have money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money and then you will be happy. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time and the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back and the tree shook with joy. And she said, come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I am too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and I want children. And so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house. But you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time, and when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered, come and play. I am too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. And after a long time, the boy came back again. I am sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I am too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I'm too tired to climb, said the boy. I am sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. I am sorry. 
I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down, sit down and rest. And the boy did. And the tree was happy. The end. There you go. So who else do we have? Oh, we have Brenda and Karen. Thanks for joining us. And do we have another winner? Um, give me one second. Okay. So, uh, again, my Facebook page, you guys obviously are aware of that, but then JJ Allen book author, um, dot com is my uh, regular website, and you can actually order books through there, and I can send signed copies on that. They're actually a little bit cheaper on that site as well. Here's your My Favorite Everything. And welcome, Jennifer. Is she the winner? Or Jennifer? Yeah. Oh, Jennifer Barnett. You're the second winner. So we're going to get copies of both of my books. And the other one is obviously inside the house. But You're My Favorite Everything. Uh, there's a bug in the tub. It won't get out. So we'll get your information and get those signed copies out to you. Message. And, oh, and, oh, message? We wanted to message us? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to, we'll message you or you'll message us. We'll find you. And then we'll get those, we'll find you. And then we'll get those books out to you. And then my next book, Proof of Tooth, will be out literally any time now. I'm going to say in the next month or so. We're going for June, um, but just doing some final edits on those illustrations. It's a slow process. But, just say their names one more time. so Jennifer Barnett is the winner and Kimberly and Jeremy. So, and it's A N. It's yes. just that's so cute. There's just that was confusing. I thought you missed the D in Kimberly and Jeremy. So, uh, so thanks guys for joining us. We'll be doing maybe once a month. If you have suggestions or improvements or something that you would like to see or uh, have read, uh, give us a shout. And also, I do a lot of readings for schools. I've done a couple via Zoom, and they have gone so well. What I tell you. Uh, just the interaction with the kids is great. So if you have, obviously, children in school, if you're connected to any schools, daycares, I will do live readings via Zoom all the time. I love them. They're actually probably my favorite things to do. Oh, she's in the class. So Kim, she's the teacher. So Miss Jeremy. Yes. So Miss Jeremy is the winner. Maybe we'll send a couple copies for her class then, being that you are a class. So if you guys have uh, any feedback, uh, kind or unkind, I take it all. So just give us a, a buzz and uh, look for our next reading. And I'm um, happy to do readings for schools as well. So you guys have a great day. Happy Earth Day. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.